In this video, I'm going to replace this old dinosaur thermostat with a new digital one I built myself. Digital. So there's a lot of reasons why I want to get rid of this thermostat, but the most important ones is it's inaccurate. Um, I really don't know exactly what temperature it is right now according to this thing. It might be 71. Uh, it's hard to say. Whereas this one, I've got it down to the decimal in Celsius, of course, but uh, I know exactly what the temperature is. And that's very important because if, it, if your thermostat's inaccurate, it's inefficient, and it's going to be on and off when it doesn't need to be. And that's going to waste energy. Whereas this, I can set it precisely. And the other point about it is, well, yeah, why don't I just buy a, a proper digital thermostat for an RV or a trailer? And there are a lot out there for $60 to $100. But this one cost me under $20. Like the actual heart of this unit, I think I've seen it for like $8 on Amazon. And so all I had to do is make a case for it and a few buttons and I'm good to go. So one of the other really neat features about this digital thermometer is its temperature range. This one actually goes down to minus 50 Fahrenheit. Now that's pretty cold. But the point is, that's a lot different from this old traditional one. It has a range of plus 50 Fahrenheit to 90. What kind of range is that? I mean, 50 is t-shirt weather where I'm from, and I'm never going to set the thermostat to 90 degrees. Not very practical for camping, and it's certainly not practical for being off the grid. When I'm off the grid, I need to conserve energy as much as possible. So when I'm out hiking or snowshoeing or whatever, I don't need the trailer kept at room temperature. I only need it just above freezing so water won't freeze. So having something like this, I can set it to 35 degrees, 40 degrees, uh, and not worry about wasting a lot of propane and energy. And not, not only that, at night, I don't need it really that warm because I've got a big sleeping bag to keep me warm. So again, that's another opportunity to conserve energy. So there's so many uses for a little guy like this. And you might have noticed that it's running even though it's not plugged in. How did I do that? Magic! There's a 9 volt battery in behind it. Now, I'm not running it. With the, the one that I'm actually using is back here by my bed, and I run it on 12 volts. But the neat thing about this little control device, this little thermostat, is you can run it on 9 volts. So you can take it outside and get the temperature outside. You can bring it in the car. But there's so many uses you can make for a little controller like this. Um, I, my, my other one, which I might show in a later video, controls the furnace and the fans. So I can do either or. I can also rig this up to control the temperature of my cooler. So again, it's not wasting energy by getting too cold when it's already cold out. So, so many uses for this little guy, but we're only going to talk about the furnace in this video. So most of this video is really about making the case and fitting in the, uh, the controlling unit. There's not a lot about electrical, and the simple reason is there's really not much to say about electrical. Like this thermostat, you've got two wires coming in from your furnace. You use the same two on this, and the other two are just to power up the unit itself. It needs 12 volts, so there's a positive and negative. Really basic. It's making this little box that takes up the time. And that's what you're going to see a lot of in this video. So the good thing about the rest of this video is you don't have to see me yapping the whole time. I'm going to let the pictures do their own talking. I'll play some nice music in the background. But uh, I hope you find this interesting. Uh, get a few tips and uh, enjoy.
Here's the original controller just for the furnace which I originally installed and uh, just wanted to show you how easy the wiring is on this as there is on the controller there's four terminals let me just get this right there's four terminals one two three four the first two are for the switch so the first two go directly to the two wires from the furnace that's underneath this one's positive it runs the controller and this one's ground or negative and it runs the controller so there's only four wires going in the only exception is I have the switch here which is going to uh, the positive lead switches that so that if I don't want it to be automatic I can shut it off that way and uh, there's no power going to the furnace or to the uh, to the sensor so there it says it's 12.1 degrees Celsius right now and that is just by that switch right there okay so here's a little demo as how the uh, cold setting for the thermostat works it's now 6.6 .6 celsius but it's dropping i have it for set for six so at about 5.9 the furnace should kick in There's six. As you can see it's kicked in and you can hear the furnace running now. Now to uh, save time I'm actually just going to put my hand on the sensor. The furnace is just actually kicked on it was just the fan. So I'm just going to heat it up a little bit. There. You can see it's turned itself off. You heard that click. And eventually the fan will go off. And just as the uh, furnace came down, uh, the temperature was down that it started up at 5.9 again. So it's working perfectly. Okay, you can wake up now. Time to go to bed. Hope you had a good sleep through that one. I will try for more, more exciting videos coming up. I'm just on my way out uh, camping uh, in a couple of days, so I'll bring back some, uh, some camping videos. Uh, so I'll lay off the uh, how-to videos for the next week or so, but they will be back. And in the meantime, happy camping and happy hacking. Check out my other trailer modification videos and please subscribe.